Hey everybody! Um, today I thought I would teach a hand building class on how to make a goblet shape that you could use to drink out of or a raised planter. So you could actually use this goblet shape, make it a little bit larger and you could have a little a raised planter that sits in your window. So let's get started. Okay, so we'll put that aside. So I'm using a, um, it's standard white sculpture clay. Um, it's very groggy. It's got, I don't know if you can see how much grog it's got in it, but it's pretty, it's pretty gritty. Um, but it stands up really well and it, um, it makes it real easy to uh, work very, very fast. Um, I think that y'all have at Art Alliance an, a white sculpture clay, but if not, you can use Riverside Grit. It's just going to come out um, a, a brown instead of um, white. And I'm just going to roll out. I'm going to start by rolling out a little pancake on my bat here. And the thing I like about these goblet shapes is that I make them hollow but enclosed because then you can make them into a rattle. I don't know if you can hear that. Okay, so I'm just going to use my X-Acto knife to cut a circle like that. Okay, and then I'll take my little scoring tool and I'm just going to make a little scoring all the way around the rim. Okay, and I'm going to start rolling out my snakes. I'm going to take a little bit of water here. And just a tiny bit. And then I'm just going to start putting the coils on. And like I said, this is a fast build because this clay is so strong. So I'm just going to put a couple on. And what we're going to do is we're going to, we want to go into a, triangle or cone shape pattern so we're going to build on the inside of each coil so when you build inside you go in okay and then once you get like two or three you can use either a a knife shaped rib I use my dental tool or the dental spatula and I'm just going to pull up the clay from the bottom and combining all the coils together. Like that. And it's going to look a little messy. Don't worry about that. Let's get it built up and then we'll clean it all up in just a second. And if you like, you can roll out your coils beforehand. That saves a little bit of time. I like to do it as I go because then the coils are always the same wetness that I want. Sometimes when you pre-roll, they get a little dry. Okay, and again, I'm going in, putting the coils on the inside to go in. Like that. And then we've got like three or four, so we can start to smooth this out. You can go from the bottom or the top down. It doesn't matter. Either way, you're going to smooth these out. And again, like I said, it's going to look a little messy. But that's okay. We're going to clean that up in just a minute. Okay. And we're just going to again go in. Place it on the inside to go in. Okay, now let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit. Now we're getting close to the top, and it's going to make it a little bit more difficult to get our fingers in there. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is just I'm going to straighten up this little rim right here. 
and add a little bit of clay here, there, and then I'm going to start cleaning this little cone shape up. And I've just got my middle finger down there as a support system. Now I'm going to put my index and middle finger in, and I'm just going to pull from the bottom all the way up, cleaning up this clay so it's nice and smooth. Okay, now <clears throat> this is the time where I would put in my little um, extra little pieces of clay that I roll up into the little balls. These are going to become my rattle. So I'm going to put a couple of these in there. The great thing about having them bone dry is they won't stick to the walls of the pot inside. If they're wet balls when you put them in, you've got about a 50-50 chance that they're going to stick and then they won't rattle for you. Okay, so now we've got our little <clears throat> base and I'm going to set that aside. What you would want to do at this point is let this set up a little bit and then we're going to add the bottom. Okay, so I'm just going to set that aside here. Now I've already got one that I pre-made. And so at this point, I'm just going to clean up the bottom just with my fingers, just rubbing the edge, making sure it's nice and smooth. Okay. And now we're going to put the, ba the bottom on to the base. Okay, so we're going to sit that aside for a second. Take a little piece of clay, roll it into a ball. And then we're going to use our little roller here. We have a nice base. And then again, we're going to take our X-Acto knife and just make a circle. Oops, don't hit your base. There. <clears throat> okay, now we've got our circle, which is going to be our bottom. And we're going to just pull this, this rim out like that has a little bit of a base for the bottom. We're going to score. And using a little water, we're just going to put a little water on there. And now we're going to put the base on. You're just going to stick it kind of and just try to find the middle. And then you're just going to start to press all the way around the base into the bottom. Okay, now this is set up right here so you can turn this over and we're just going to join the two pieces together using my little knife. I'm just going to pull this clay onto our circle all the way around. And then if you feel like that's not secure enough, you can roll a little snake and add the snake to that seam. And then again, we're gonna take our knife and just join this. There, like that. Now, you can take a damp sponge and clean this up but I'm not going to waste your time with that, so we're just going to, whoops, he doesn't want to come up, hold on. I'm just going to give it a little tug here, okay, and then it'll come up. Now, to, to, uh, to prevent that from happening, you could put a piece of paper down. Um, since this was a piece of wet clay, it 
it's going to tend to stick to your bat. The problem with this one is I've been using this bat for a little bit, so this bat is a little damp right here, and that's why it's stuck. But you can always put a piece of paper down before you put your base down, and, um, and that'll prevent that sticking. Okay, so now we've done our base, and we're just going to press this in so it has like a cup shape in here. And we're gonna pull this little edge up a little bit, forming the bottom of our goblet or planter. So then we're gonna set that aside and let this edge set up so that we can build on it. And I have one pre-made, so here it is. It's all set up, it's a little bit a little bit of give, but it's still um, hard enough for me to build on top of. Okay, so again, we're going to take our scoring tool and we're going to score our little edge here. If you need to put your fingers underneath for support, you can. Okay. And then we're going to get a little bit of water. And a lot of times I'll stand to build um, when it gets this tall. It's just easier for me to stand while I'm building. And again, you just start to roll out some coils. We're just going to press this into our scored area. And just going to keep going up. Now this clay's wet enough that I don't have to score and slip each time I go around. Um, because I just took it right out of the bag. And I'm going to get about three coils all the way around. And then I'm going to smooth the coils on into each other. Now, you can smooth the coils inside of this pot. I don't. I like the rough look of, um, let's see if I can show you. I like the rough look of the coils inside, especially if it's going to be a planter. Now, if you want it to be a goblet, you may want to take the time to smooth the coils on the inside. And the best way to do that that I've found is just to use your fingers and then a damp sponge. Um, but again, we won't waste time doing that because that's something that you can investigate on your own. So when you're ready to smooth, you can just bring the clay from the bottom up. like this and then sometimes I'll just take a swipe to the side all the way around just kind of smoothing this out and you can see all the grog coming out of this clay so it's a very gritty clay which to me lends itself to be a planter because it can hold up to a lot of water issues I mean you could leave these outside because the grog is going to help that water if it got a lot of water on it it would help drain it it wouldn't keep the water. The grog really helps. Okay, so now I'm gonna take the needle, my, oh, my tool again, and I'm going to smooth this out. And let's add the last couple coils that we're going to add to. This is actually a smaller piece. So it's probably going to be more like a goblet. Um, we're going to add our last coils to our goblet. And then I'm going to show you all some different ways to decorate. I really like the way these look. So I'll show you what, what tools I use to make the lines and the dotted line on these two planters over here. I'm going to go up just a little further. Now, because this is going to be a goblet, I'm going to be really um, conscientious about the rim and how it might feel when you are drinking out of it. So we'll talk about that. Let me just get this last little coil on, and then we'll work on that. Smoothing this out and getting this rim the way we want it.
you can even hear the sound of that grog as my tool hits it. Oops, if you do that, just put it back together. No big deal. And I'm just gonna go back around and I'm just smoothing this out. Okay, now. Now, to talk about the rim, I'm gonna go around and I'm just pinching this. Trying to make sure that it feels even. What I want to think about is the way that the rim feels against your mouth. And I'm gonna show you a rim that I have right here. So this is one of my mugs and notice that it's thinner, it, it's thick and then it gets thinner to the edge, right? So that's a nice smooth feeling against your mouth. That's what we're gonna go for here. So it's gonna be thicker right around here on the inside and then it's gonna start to smooth out to a, 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 um, a thinner edge. And so I'm just gonna go around and try to make that happen. On the wheel, it, it's a little bit easier to make that happen, but I'm just pinching this top edge so it's thinner than this area inside here. And that looks pretty good. I did this one that way too. You can kind of see where it's thinner at the top and it's got a little bit of a bump right here. Okay, so I'm gonna grab a damp sponge. Now I can tell that this rim is uneven and if that bothers you, then you can cut it off. I'm gonna just smooth this out for a second and then I'll, cu I'll cut this rim so that it's even. Um, it really doesn't bother me with something this rustic. I kind of like for it to be a little wonky, but that's just my preference for you at home if you're a little bit more into things being a little bit more pristine, then you can actually cut this off or add to it to make it be even. Okay, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to First, I'm gonna just clean this up a little bit in the places where I feel like there might be a little bit of extra gunk. And so you can just fuss with your sponge. Just make it how you want it. Okay, so there's my finished goblet. Now, like I said, if it was me, I would leave it just like this because I like it to have a little bit of personality. Um, but since uh, you might not want that extra little personality, I'll show you how to make your room even. So I'm just gonna take my X-Acto knife and I'm just gonna gently start to cut this edge. And see, so you can tell that was quite a bit of difference, that thickness right there. So um, I'm gonna just pinch this out again so it's nice and thin at the rim. The, oops, some of it didn't come off. Let me see that. There we go. There, now. There we go. And so it's nice and thin at the rim. And then you can take your sponge again and smooth that out. So it's nice and even and doesn't have a sharp edge. Okay. Still a little off on one side, but you get the you get the gist of what how to take care of that uneven rim. And let your pots have their own personality. It's fun to let them be a little wonky sometimes, especially if they're gonna be something like this planter over here. Um, it just gives them a little bit of personality. I just think that's so cute and so nice when it has its little plant inside. I just think that's so pretty. Okay, so talking about decoration, you could slip this and carve it with an image if you want. Um, I'm not doing that today. I like these to be super fast and fun. So what I did with this is I just have my Kemper tool. Um, let's see how you can see it. There we go. It's a triangle top. And I'm just going to quickly pull this down. It's 
probably going to be easier if we turn this upside down. So we're just going to do that. So I'm just going to pull this quickly down. And I take about an inch in between each line. And you notice uh, because of the grog, oops, I went a little deep on that one. Be careful not to go too deep. Um, the grog pulls my tool so my lines aren't straight, which is fine. Like I said, I like these to be rustic. Um, I like them to be wonky and have some personality. Again, don't be too quick. I'm trying to to make this a fast video, uh, but don't be too quick and go in too deep because you don't want to go through your wall. Um, that would be bad, especially after all the time you took to make this piece. Good. I'm just going to dump that. Now, um, you can just take a look at the lines. They look pretty even. Okay, so in between the lines, I take my sewing marker tool. I don't know what this thing is called, but it's used in sewing to mark a mark a line where you're going to cut. But it, it's really sharp, so don't stick your fingers in it. But it makes these a line of dots, which is just really awesome. So I'm just going to pull. And see how the, the grog is going to throw that off? And it's so fine with me. I don't mind it being off at all. Like that. And let's turn this back over and we'll give it a little brush down with my very soft bristle brush bristled brush <laughs> that was hard to say for some reason just getting all those little goobers off you can take a damp sponge to this and make it a little bit smoother but I like it to be rough um, one last thing I want to tell you before we go is that um, because this space is an air pocket um, you're gonna want to put a hole in the bottom but again, you can still hear the rattle. And you've got yourself a nice, thick, stout goblet. Or you can use yours as a planter. So I hope y'all have a wonderful week and stay healthy and safe. And see you next time.